General Edward C. Crute. He is currently battalion commander of the U.S. Army Mid-Atlantic Recruiting Battalion. Um, he has served in a few places in this world. Bosnia, Mas Macedonia, Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Zambia. He's been special terrorism advisor to the U.S. ambassador in Bangladesh. But forget about all those exotic places because most important, Lieutenant Colonel Crute is a Jersey guy. Born in West Orange, moved to Long Valley at age seven, and now lives at the U.S. Naval Station, Engineering Station in Lakehurst, so great Jersey ties. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about him, and I, I tried to find a way to cut this to three words, and I, I kept struggling. It was impossible. So let me say this briefly. Lieutenant Colonel Crute was commissioned as an infantry second lieutenant in 1995, assigned in 97 to the 1st Battalion, 26th Infantry Regiment in Germany. As a rifle platoon leader, scout platoon leader, brigade assistance operations officer, he was subse subsequently deployed in Bosnia, Macedonia, and Kosovo. From 2002 to 6, he served, among others, as detachment commander, battalion assistant, headquarters support company commander during the invasion of Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Two combat tours in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. An operational tour at the U.S. Embassy in Yemen. A joint combined exercise for training in Africa and Zambia. He was again assigned to the 3rd Special Forces Group Airborne from 9, 2009 to 11. Served as company commander for two combat tours in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and support to operations in Pakistan. In 2012 and 13, he served as Pacific Command's counterterrorism advisor to the ambassador, the U.S. Embassy in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Many decorations include the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star, Meritorious Service Medal, Joint Service Commendation Medal, Army Commendation Medal, and Joint Service Achievement Medal. In addition, and I'm not sure where he found the time, but he'll have to tell us, Lieutenant Colonel Crute holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Business from the University of Pittsburgh, a Master's of Science in Education from Kansas State University, and a Master's of Military Art and Science in Theater Operations from the United States Army Command and General Staff College. And he's also, I think, one or two days removed from surgery. So with all of that said, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Colonel Edward C. Crute. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am extremely embarrassed that I made the decision to get surgery two days ago. Um, but I didn't want to miss this. And my mom and dad are right over here. They didn't want me to come. They said, are you crazy? My wife said the same. Uh, but, uh, you know, it meant a lot to me to be here. Um, I think it's important to separate two days. And those two days are Veterans Day and Memorial Day. But before I do that, let's make sure that we understand what Veterans Day is. And it's, it's a day that occurs in November, 11 November, used to be Armistice Day. And it has to do with recognizing the gentlemen that are in the front row here and other veterans that are in our crowd today. And I want to share a story with you. Um, I don't know if you guys know a, guy, a gentleman named um, Woody Bergener. He lives in Long Valley, which is where I'm from. I uh, went to West Mars Central an amazing man who continues to make sure that we never forget our military personnel that have served in the past and in the present and in the future. And I came home on a, on a Christmas leave about seven years ago, and I've been deployed about 82 months operationally um, since I've been in the Army. Um, and I said to him, you know, Woody, I'm kind of embarrassed by all the thanks for my services I'm getting. I think it's a little bit overdone. And he looked me in the face, and said, Ed, I don't ever, ever want you to say that again. I don't ever want you to think that again. Because our veterans didn't always get that appreciation when they came home. Now, I talked to a bunch of folks in the front row. I think we have some Vietnam era um, veterans here. And I also know that we have some uh, Korean veterans here. And uh, I think World War II, we were welcomed home with ticker tape parades. We were after uh, Operation, excuse me, the Gulf War, but I know that the Vietnam vets and Koreans were never welcomed home. So 
everybody would please join me in a round of applause welcoming him. apologize. I can't project my voice like I normally do. Um, the second uh, group that I'd like to acknowledge real quick, and this is a little out of character, but all of our policemen and firemen that are in uniform and, and the folks that are in the dark uniforms out there, and I hope you guys are at the rest position while in formation. I know what it's like to stand out on a hot day in uniform. But they never get thanked enough. So if you'd all enjoy and join me, please, in a round of applause for our police and, our, and all of our firemen who serve us every day. All right, so now let's talk about the day that, that comes up on Monday, which all the kids only know is the day that they get off from school, Memorial Day, and the purpose for why we're here. To do that, i got to put a Jersey Kids uh, story in context for you. So I went off to the University of Pittsburgh after graduating from Westmore Central in 1989. Last thing in my mind was joining the Army. After a couple of years, uh, about 1991, I was walking to class, and uh, with a buddy of mine named Brian Felgois, and there was a bunch of kids that were on campus protesting the Gulf War. And I turned to Brian and I'm like, who, who dare those kids who have everything? Their parents are probably paying for them to go to school, and here they are protesting against our service members who are over in the Gulf. And he turned to me, my, my mom will appreciate that, and my dad, and he said, who are you? You're doing the same. All you're doing is partying, playing lacrosse, and partying. Your parents have worked their butt off to send you to college. What have you served? What have you done? And I'll tell you, that totally shocked me. I didn't go to class that day. I just stood for 30, 30 minutes and took stock of my life. After that, I went and found a Army recruiter. I enlisted into the Army, um, into the reserves to couple my business degree with, uh, my, with uh, the Finance Corps. Went to basic training, fell in love with basic training. And then the next fateful day for me was October 3rd, 1993. And if anybody from Long Valley, everybody from Long Valley knows this date, I know. Most people from Morris County should. It's the day that uh, our Rangers uh, had the main firefight in Somalia. And we lost uh, Corporal Jamie Smith, who was a classmate of mine at uh, West Morris. Um, he was a year behind me. He was a junior. And... Uh, <clears throat> Oh, so, that was the second day that I took stock of my life. Uh, shoot, sorry. I'll get it together, don't worry. I was no better at my wedding. <laughs> okay. So, I, I took stock of my life that day as well and decided to um, be an airborne ranger like Jamie. So you heard my story. I've, I've served in a lot of different places. Um, particularly important to me uh, and compelling to me was a second individual that I met while on active duty service during the invasion of Iraq. And if you're familiar with the invasion of Iraq, uh, after shock and awe, the special forces unit I was with was in the, nor the north with 20,000 Kurds. And those 20,000 Kurds, the same Kurds that are fighting ISIS today on the news, same ones are who we linked up with and built the northern uh, front against the Iraqi forces, that all our forces could come from the south. And uh, after about three weeks of intense combat, artillery being shot back and forth, um, we found ourselves caught out in the open. And if anybody's ever been in artillery, you know that when a round lands in front of you and then a round lands about 100 yards behind you, where's the next round going to land? right on top of you because they're starting to bracket you and bring them in on you. So at that point, we tur I turned to my 12-man Special Forces team and we jumped in our vehicles and we hauled back 100 yards back to, the, uh, to some cover. And we got to cover and we jumped up on the berm and said, wow, we made it out of there just in time. And at that split second, I heard my team sergeant, Joe Brewer, talking in my ear just as through the binoculars I recognized what looked like another American sitting back there in the artillery just as my team sergeant says to me, where's Todd? And Todd was one of our teammates, one of the 12, that didn't jump in the vehicle when we hauled butt to get out of there. So without thinking, I left my rifle and the Marines that are in, in the color guard right now would say you never leave your rifle. I didn't even think about it. I left my radio, I left my binoculars, I sprinted to the vehicle and I jumped in the vehicle and I drove into the artillery to get Todd. Was that bravery? No, I was scared to death 
and all I could see was Todd's wife and kids. <laughs> oh, come on. Because this isn't even about Todd. I grabbed him, he went up, he dove in the vehicle, we drove back, and uh, a guy named <clears throat> Paul Sweeney, who was on my team, how am I doing on time, babe? Okay. A guy named Paul Sweeney, uh, <clears throat> from Rochelle Park, New Jersey, came running up to me, and he said, are you okay? I said, yes, I am. And he punched me square in the eye. <laughs> Huge black eye. Punched me in the eye, and he said, don't you ever do that again. We're a team. I said, all right, Paulie. He's like, I need, I need another Yankee fan on my team. You're the only one. We got nobody else to root, root for the Yankees while we're out here in this god-awful place. I got it, Paulie. So after that, about three months went by. We were done with that tour in, Afghan uh, tour in Iraq. Came home to brag. Um, asked my wife to marry me. And then we, off we went to Afghanistan. And uh, we were there for about three months, went out in the Helmand province. Marines are familiar with the Helmand province. At the time, down in South Afghanistan, I happened to be the senior American at about 26 years old in that province, in charge of all American efforts there. And uh, we had a little internet access, and so I was standing behind Paul Sweeney, St. Paul that punched me in the eye, my buddy from New Rochelle Park, New Jersey. And he said, uh, he said, hey, I'm getting ready to go out on patrol. I know you're not, not on this patrol, uh, but check this picture out. And he showed me a picture of his two sons. And uh, he explained to me over the next 12 minutes or so how different kids can be. That when you raise kids the exact same way as a parent, it's amazing that they can turn out to be different. And he was talking to me about how his two boys were night and day. One was a football linebacker, one loved science. One was, uh, you know, really fast and uh, didn't listen to anything that anybody said. And one was, you know, just the greatest kid in the world to his parents. And so, damn, sorry, I didn't think this was going to happen today. I apologize. Um, so he jumped up and said goodbye. I said later, bro, I'll see you at uh, breakfast tomorrow. And uh, he didn't come back. Shit. Almost done. So. Hang in there, bro. They're bored. Okay, so it's on these days, uh, on Memorial Day, that it's important. Uh, I have like one sentence left. <laughs> uh, um, it's important that we remember that each one of the, the service members that's ever given their life has a story just like that. So please, on Memorial Day, remember those that didn't come on. Thank you. Thank you.